In this video, we'll take a look at how we can use jQuery to generate HTML elements. In previous exercises, we've been using jQuery to access elements within the document object model to manipulate them in some way, but we can actually use jQuery to create DOM elements. So we have the jQuery function which we've seen, which can be used to access existing page elements, but can also be used to create additional page elements. We simply pass to that jQuery function a snippet of HTML code. So in this case, we would be generating an h1 tag with the contents that say uh, using jQuery to generate HTML. We can also use jQuery to create empty elements, and this is pretty common because you often want to create some sort of element like a div to hold some content and then dynamically generate that content based on user interactivity and populate the empty div with some new content. Creating these elements with this technique does just that. It creates the element. It doesn't necessarily display the element in the web browser. In order to do that, you append the element with a variety of techniques, but we're going to look at two methods, the append and the append to methods. In the append to method, you pass in a tag name, and then it will create the element and append that new element to whatever tag name you passed here. You'll need to open the exercise underscore one dot HTML file, which is located in the chapter six generating HTML directory. Locate the script block and the document ready function. Place your cursor inside the document ready function. And the first thing that we're going to do is learn how to create an element that doesn't exist in the HTML document when it's launched. So we're going to create a div tag and then we'll place our name inside that div tag. We'll give the tag an ID of author. So we use our jQuery method right here to call jQuery, and then we simply pass to it, quoted of course, the content that we want to add. We're going to add a div tag, and it looks like I need to adjust my quotes here. The quotes need to surround the element you're creating. We're creating a div element with this code. But remember, we also want to give it an ID of author. So we're going to say ID equals author, and then we'll place our name inside the div tag before we close it. So I'll go ahead and type my first name and last name here. And then I'll close that div tag that I created. Remember that although this tag is created in memory and it is part of the DOM, we won't see it in the browser until we append it to the document. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the append to method and we're going to pass to it an element that does exist in the document and append our new element called div to that element. And that element will be the body tag. So we'll pass that in. Let's save and test this in the browser and you'll see that you have appended to the end of the body section of this web page your first and last name. When we created this div element we basically hard-coded the div and its ID and its value author. But there may be times when you want to dynamically create the value of the attribute. You'll be able to do that with this next technique. So let's comment out this line of jQuery that we just wrote and let's do something similar in the sense that we'll still be creating a div tag. So we're still using the jQuery method and passing to it a div tag to which we're going to place our first and last name and close that div tag. This time however we're going to use the same method to create an attribute for the tag that precedes it and of course that tag that precedes the method is the one in the jQuery that we dynamically created here. So we're going to give that div an attribute and we do so by passing the attribute information to the attribute method. So we first pass it the name of the attribute that we want to create. So remember we're really trying to mimic what we did on line one but we're using a different method to do it. So after we pass in the name of the attribute we want to create as the first argument to this method we'll pass in the second argument, which is the value of that attribute, which in this case is our first and last name. But you could easily replace this with a variable created with JavaScript that captures whatever the user typed into a text input field, for example. Now remember, we're not going to see this content without appending it to the document. So we'll call on the append to method to do that and append this new element and attribute to our body tag. To summarize, we're using the jQuery wrapper method to dynamically create a div tag with our first and last name inside of it. And once that div tag is created, we're going to use a jQuery method called attribute, which will create an ID property to this tag, this div tag, and assign this value to it. 
and then we'll display this in the browser with the append to method. So let's save this and test it in the browser. And you'll see that you've got a tag down here that has been appended to the document. And this displays my first and last name to this page very nicely, but we really don't know if our ID attribute has been created. I'm using the Chrome browser now that includes a tool that allows me to investigate the document in more detail. You can see there's a series of buttons here that allow me to dig deeper into the script, output to a console, and so forth. What I want to do is examine the elements in this dynamically generated document. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And you can see that we have successfully created a div tag with my first and last name inside of it. But more importantly, we can now confirm that our attribute method worked because our div tag does have an ID attribute and it is assigned the value we gave it in our jQuery code. In order to demonstrate this next selector, we're going to modify the structure of the HTML file a bit. So locate the section with the instructions header 2. It's about line 26. And above that line, we'll add some new content. We're going to add an h3 tag and give it an ID of author name and place your first and last name inside that h3 tag. What we'll do next is use a selector that will dynamically generate a div tag for us. But we'll also dynamically generate the attribute based on the ID attribute of this h3 tag. So let's return to our script and we'll comment out that line we just wrote and we'll start by declaring a variable. We'll start with the keyword var and then we'll name our variable author name and we'll assign the value of that variable to the ID attribute of this h3 tag. So again we'll use jQuery for this. We're going to come down here and select that author name property to copy it and we'll pass that in as the selector using the pound symbol first because it, it is an ID selector. But I don't want to leave it like this because what I'll do here is create this variable called author name, which is fine because that's what we want to do. But the value of the author name value shouldn't be an object in the DOM. And that's exactly what this points to, the div. And it's not the div I want here. It's the contents of that div, my first and last name. So in order to get the text inside that div, we invoke the text method. So now our variable points to the actual text inside the div element. Whenever you're in doubt about this sort of thing, you can always invoke an alert box and just an alert uh, author name, the name of our variable. So if I'm questioning this uh, particular piece of jQuery that I've written and assigned to this variable name, I'll just alert the variable name and I'll test that and see if I get what I want. So the jQuery is correct and it is returning what I want. what you might often encounter is forgetting to call the method that retrieves the text. So I'll save this now and you'll see that what you get in the browser is an object. Now this should make sense to you now because you know that these jQuery methods return document object model results and author name is the ID of a div right here and that div becomes a JavaScript object as far as jQuery is concerned. Let's fix that code and we'll also comment the alert statement because it has done its job and we'll go back to dynamically creating the div tag and the attribute author name inside of it. So we'll use the jQuery function to create the div with our first and last name. But we also use the attribute method to return an attribute and that attribute was going to be the ID attribute. And then the second argument to the attribute method is what should the value of that ID attribute be. And here's where it gets a bit dynamic because we don't want to hard code that value. We simply say use the variable author name. And of course to see this, we use the append to method and we append the element to the body of the web page. So slightly different from the previous approaches where we actually appended the value of the ID property to Kevin Roos. Here we simply are pointing to a variable we've declared here which is getting its value from the document itself. So you can save and test this in a browser and once again you see your div tag being created and if we 
click the F12 key in the Chrome browser, it will bring up the ability to check the document and test specifically whether the div with the ID is equal to Kevin Roos has been created. In this video, we learned how to use methods very similar to the ones that select elements, but we use them to create elements within the DOM. We use jQuery to dynamically create both elements and attributes in this video.